Hello and welcome once again everyone. Update 0.9.1 is live and with it comes the full release of the British Heavy Cruiser line which is now available right up to tier 10. There has been a new map called Northern Waters added and of course the release of the new ship upgrades. It's the main reason I've held back on releasing new ship builds until having had a proper chance to look and evaluate them. That being said, in the case of today's video on the HMS Devonshire, we can move full steam ahead. As usual, I've included the full recommended build, including captain skills, after the main highlights with the timestamp here on screen for your convenience. I've been quite pleasantly surprised with HMS Devonshire, as it's proved itself to be quite a strong cruiser. And a lot of fun to play. Devonshire's AA defence is not only capable but can be strengthened further with the defensive fire consumable. Although I have been playing around with the hydroacoustic search in my most recent games. Devonshire retains a lot of the characteristics of what made the other Royal Navy lines competitive and fun to play. Good concealment, things like the ability to launch single torps when the opportunity arises, and despite having a 14 second reload time and only 14 kilometers in range, it packs the increased caliber of 203 mm main guns. Now these guns are not bad. The shell ballistics may feel a little floaty at times, but come with the advantage when changing ammunition. One does not have to adjust your aim, as both AP and HE shell speeds are identical at 814 meters per second and will remain so for the tier 7 Surrey and tier 8 Albemarle. So aiming practice with HMS Devonshire will serve you well in the tiers to come. The armor piercing capability leaves a little bit to be desired at longer ranges but will be effective at close range. However the real strength of these guns is the fire chance. The base fire chance is 17%, which can be further boosted by mounting both India X-Ray and Victor Lima signal flags to 19%, and even further to 21%, eventually with the Demolition Expert skill, should one continue training their captains in the Devonshire. 21% fire chance at Tier 6 feels very strong. If you quickly compare it to the likes of other popular Tier 6 cruisers, like Budiani or USS Dallas, which both have a base fire chance of 12%. So you really want to engage these cruisers in high explosive slinging contests. With the increased 203mm gun calibre comes the bonus of 33mm of high explosive armour penetration, so lightly armoured targets will feel a lot of pain with these guns. The single most standout strength of HMS Devonshire is its repair parity. Combined with premium consumables and superintendent, Devonshire gets four in total, which vastly increases its survivability, allowing you to repair large amounts of light, high explosive or fire damage with ease. This allows you to trade damage with enemy cruisers, repair up during or after the engagement and simply move on to the next target. In the right hands, this makes HMS Devonshire a very dangerous opponent. I've spent the opening phase of this game engaging these two cruisers. Finally the Budiani goes down. That leaves me to focus on the enemy Hawkins, which is the tier 5 British heavy cruiser. He's now overextended. By continuing to engage inside his detection range, he no longer has the option to disengage. By ceasing fire, waiting the 20 seconds for your gun bloom to reset and simply drop detection. He has made the mistake of instantly repairing that fire. It's a mistake commonly made by cruiser captains when you're under heavy fire, especially with a heavy cruiser like the Hawkins which also has a heel. It's simply better just to let that fire burn and be able to control the amount of damage instead of repairing and possibly instantly getting set 
on fire again that you can't control. It's simply a knee-jerk reaction when set on fire to instantly damage cotton. But it's a great lesson to learn early on, is just let it burn and continue to assess the situation. Now this fire is uncontrollable, this will burn for the full duration of his damage control. In this case he's got very little chance of escaping. There is a destroyer ahead which is keeping him perma-spotted, but he is inside my detection range. So I can simply keep pouring on the pressure. We just get torped, and I manage to secure the kill on that Hawkins. With the removal of those two cruisers, it puts an end to the enemy's push on this flank. And while I may seem drastically out of position here in the corner, these lower tier maps are not that large, and relocating quickly to a more central position is not that time consuming. This map in particular is called New Dawn, and is quite a popular map for this tier. The New Mexico is the closest target, but first I need to close the distance. While having a very good rudder shift time of 6.3 seconds, the max speed of 31.3 knots does feel a little sluggish at times. But considering, as I said earlier, the maps are generally small at this tier, so having the good rudder shift time is far more important. Being able to dodge shells is what cruiser play is all about. When going up against battleships, however, one should be very cautious. Despite the classification of being a heavy cruiser, it does not mean you are heavily armoured. This same New Mexico penned my stern pretty hard earlier in this battle, and battleships are very capable of deleting the Devonshire, just like any other cruiser. So it's very important to pay close attention to where their guns are aimed, and be ready for emergency manoeuvres at all times. Enemy carrier comes in with torpedo bombers, turn inwards, step between that spread, Keep focus on this enemy New Mexico. His front guns are still turning. I'm just going to give him a slight angle to shoot at. He is distracted by these destroyers. The Nicholas is shelling him from close range. Texas is in deep trouble there in the middle. I'm going to have to angle away towards our capture point. New Mexico is still aiming at Nicholas. About to get torped. Do manage to finish off the New Mexico, but our Texas is doomed here, I think. Yes, and he goes down. He's being pushed by two destroyers. Hatsuharu and the Monahan. And now we're in a little bit of a predicament. There are two destroyers here in these group of islands and they're putting our capture point under direct threat. Enemy Hatsuharu is about to enter the capture point. And landing shells on fast moving destroyers can be a little bit of an issue. He turned it in quickly there. He managed to evade everything. The Hatsuharu does get undetected. The Monahan is still shooting my Hatsuharu. Try and take some pressure off him. It's situations like this with multiple destroyers in close proximity that I've been playing around with hydroacoustic search. Does work quite well. Hatsuharu is spotted again. Did knock out the engine on the Monahan, but the enemy carrier has taken out our destroyer. Enemy Hatsuharo is manoeuvring. At least I managed to get a reset and an incapacitation of some kind. And with these floaty shells, it's the one of the few drawbacks with the Devonshire. It can be quite tricky to land shells on slippery maneuverable targets like Japanese destroyers. Now I am being targeted by somebody else. I've got three targeting me. That's probably the battleship in their spawn. 
I'm going to have to keep maneuvering. While I do need to chase down this destroyer, I have to force him out of this capture point. And there's a moment of good fortune. Fortunately, no citadels. Still no sign of any torpedoes in the water. There are still two destroyers in close proximity. I am still perma spotted. Something's taken out my rudder. I'm still sailing straight towards this destroyer. And when you see a destroyer opening fire like this, it's normally a surefire sign there's torps in the water. I'm unable to avoid that one. I thought I was going to slip past. Do instantly repair. It's a sneaky trick used by destroyer captains to try and divert your attention, get you to zoom in and focus your attention on shooting them while not noticing the torpedoes in the water. It's a tactic I've used many times myself, so I'm well aware of it. Enemy Monahan is still in the capture point. He is detected. One good volley should finish this guy off. There's the Kraken unleashed. And that should have finally broken the enemy team's resistance in this game. Enemy carrier is still knocking around, but we're able to take out his plane. This game ended soon afterwards without incident. There is one, however, one little clip I'd like to include about the torpedoes. The torpedoes are quite useful. I wouldn't exactly encourage you to suicide rush, but during cyclones and using island cover, these torpedoes can be quite effective. You can single launch them on specific targets. Enemy Sharon Horse there is behind the smoke screen. He was forced to smoke to slow down there, but I've got a nice spread there going on target. And it's an added weapon to the Devonshire's arsenal. Second tier 7 battleship. King George appears. He is quite low. Do manage to take out that Sharon horse with the torpedoes. And a nice double strike. So let's go back to the team results from the previous game. As for a final verdict, I have to give the HMS Devonshire a resounding thumbs up. Before going to the complete ship build, I've added some links including the Help Me Discord and my own personal Discord in the description below. Now on to the build. Starting as usual with the consumables, I always try and stress the importance of using premium, not only to decrease the cooldown time of your damage control, but also to add extra charges of Repair Party and Hydroacoustic Search. Devonshire gets four ship upgrade slots, starting off with Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1, and finally Steering Gears Mod 1. Onto the Captain Skills, starting with Priority Target, Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, and Concealment Expert for your first 10 points. It's unlikely you'll have a fully trained captain at this point, but a very balanced 19 point captain will then include skills like preventive maintenance, incoming fire alert, jack of all trades, expert marksman and demolition expert in the training order of your own choice. So let's take a look at what this build means for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Devonshire gets 34,400 hit points, which is further enhanced by having four repair parties. Main artillery consists of four X2 203mm guns, two in the front and two in the rear, with 14 kilometers in range and a reload speed of 14 seconds. Devonshire gets a torpedo rating of 20, with two X4 launchers, 
one on each side with 8 kilometers in range, 61 knots of speed with a reload time of 96 seconds. Devonshire gets an AA defence rating of 48 with a long range defence of 5.8 kilometers. For manoeuvrability, Devonshire gets a max base speed of 31.3 knots, a turning circle of 710 meters, and a rudder shift time of only 6.3 seconds. Finally, Devonshire has a concealment rating of 70, meaning you will be surface detected at 10.1 kilometers and by aircraft at 5.9 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.